Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship Church. We're located in the Coney Island section of Brooklyn in New York City. One of these days I need to make a video that explains why our church is called Graffiti. That's a fun story. Um, I'd like to welcome you in this video to today's daily devotion. And this is where we take a chapter from the Bible. and We read it together each day. Each video is a chapter. And uh, this is just designed to be a tool to help all of us incorporate a little bit of God's Word into our daily routine. In this particular video series, we're reading through the Gospel of Luke. <clears throat> so there are videos in a playlist. Each one covers a subsequent chapter, excuse me, a preceding chapter of Luke. Today we're reading Luke chapter 22. We're getting very close to the end of Luke. There are 24. I think there are 24 chapters in Luke. Yeah, 24 chapters. So almost to the end of Luke's gospel and where we are in the narrative. Uh, it's, it's the Passion Week. It's the last week of Jesus' life. He's entered Jerusalem to observe the Passover celebration. He's come to Jerusalem amidst great fanfare. The people celebrated his arrival. And those same people will soon be crying out, demanding his public execution. We're going to see that Luke chapter 22 is a, is a long chapter. It's more than 70 verses, which is pretty close to double what we're used to seeing in, in Luke's gospel. And in this long chapter, we're going to see a lot of great significance. We're going to see Judas arranged to betray Jesus. We're going to see Jesus predict in a conversation with Peter that Peter would, in fact, deny him when, when Peter says that he's ready to die with Jesus. Uh, we're going to see Jesus pray in the Mount of Olives. We're going to see the actual arrest of Jesus. And then Jesus before the, uh, the council. These are the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And um, one that I uh, overlooked, a significant part of this chapter, is the Last Supper that Jesus celebrates with His disciples, with these apostles. Um, this is for them the Passover meal. And it's also the scene where Jesus... Um, he gives us one of the ordinances, one of the sacraments of our church, and that is the Holy Communion. So all of that happening in this very important chapter, Luke chapter 22. So let's read through it, beginning in verse 1. It says, The festival of unleavened bread, which is also called Passover, was approaching, and their leading priests and uh, teachers of religious law were plotting how to kill Jesus. They were afraid of the people's reaction. Then Satan entered Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples, and he went to the leading priests and the captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted, and they promised to give him money. So he agreed, and he began looking for the opportunity to betray Jesus so they could arrest him when the crowds weren't around. Now the festival of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover lamb is sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, Go prepare the Passover meal so we can eat it together. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked him, and he replied, As soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him, and at the house he enters, say to the owner, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He'll take you upstairs to a large room that's already set up, and that is where you should prepare our meal. They went off to the city and found everything just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover meal there. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. And Jesus said, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it, and he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. 
He took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. And then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. But here at this table, sitting among us, as a friend, is a man who will betray me. For it has been determined that the Son of Man must die, but what sorrow awaits the one who betrays him? And the disciples began to ask each other, which of them would ever do such a thing? And then they began to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. Jesus told them, in this world, the kings and the great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. What is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here. For I'm among you as one who serves. You've stayed with me in my time of trial, and just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. You'll sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that's Peter, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you, even to die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you'll deny three times that you even know me. Then Jesus asked them, when I sent you out to preach the good news and you did not have money, a traveler's bag or an extra pair of sandals, did you need anything? No, they replied. But now, he said, take your money in a traveler's bag, and if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one, for the time has come for this prophecy about me to be fulfilled. He was counted among the rebels. Yes, everything written about me by the prophets will come true. Look, Lord, they said, we have two swords among us. That's enough, he said. Then, Accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went, as usual, to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray that you'll not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently. And he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. But even as Jesus said this, a crowd approached, led by Judas, one of the twelve disciples. Judas walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss, but Jesus said, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When the other disciples saw what was about to happen, they exclaimed, Lord, should we fight? We brought the swords. One of them struck at the high priest's slave, slashing off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus spoke to the leading priests, the captains of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him. Am I some dangerous revolutionary, he asked, that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day. But this is your moment, the time when the power of darkness reigns. So they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home, and Peter followed at a distance. The guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter joined them there. A servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him, and finally she said, This man was one of Jesus' followers. Peter denied it. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, You you must be one of them. No, man, I'm not, Peter retorted. About an hour later, someone else insisted, this must be one of them because he, he, he's a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. 
At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and suddenly the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you'll deny three times that you even know me. And Peter left the courtyard, weeping bitterly. The guards in charge of Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and said, Prophesy to us. Who hit you that time? They hurled all sorts of terrible insults at him. At daybreak, the elders of the people assembled, including the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law. Jesus was led before this high council, and they said, Tell us, are you the Messiah? But he replied, If I tell you, you won't believe me. And if I ask you a question, you won't answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated in the place of power at God's right hand. And they all shouted, So are you claiming to be the Son of God? And he replied, You say that I am. Why do we need other witnesses, they said. We ourselves heard him say it. That's the end of Luke chapter 22. Uh, again, a very long chapter, 71 verses. A lot of really important content. Uh, I'm not going to offer really any commentary just because this video is already on the long side. Uh, but I will thank you for joining us for Luke chapter 22. I hope it's blessed you. If you think it might bless others, feel free to share these however uh, however, it's uh, you know easy for you to do so. We just want God's Word to get in people's hands and tools like this that make God's Word more accessible. We want these to get in people's hands too. And so, again, feel free to share and uh, hope you'll join us for the next chapter of Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, which is the next to last gospel, uh, next to last chapter in this gospel. God bless you.